The Revenue Forum is a non-profit initiative started by me in 2008. And currently we organize webinars. Uh, we hold these uh, on Thursdays every six weeks. Half day seminars in 10 cities and eight countries. And we're going to start again this year. Actually, we've started uh, the organization of our first one. And we have whole day events. Uh, this is a unique hybrid event held simultaneously in Stockholm, London, Milan, and most probably more cities throughout the world. The next one is planned on the 7th of February next year. The topic of this episode is the future of loyalty. And we have invited an expert panel to talk about their view of the subject. We will close off the hour with a panel discussion. Participants from this webinar are a broad mix of listeners from all over the world. There are hotels ranging from two to five star, independent and large brands, and we will try to make this coming hour as inspiring to all of you. Special welcome to the students uh, that are here. There are quite a number of students at this time, and also a very special welcome to everybody in the States and, and, and Asia. Good morning and good evening to, to all of you. Our experts panel consists of five speakers. Expert speakers will get five minutes to talk and we will use a Pecha Kucha format. This means that the presentation slides automatically change after 20 or 30 seconds. Uh, and let me start with the introduction of the first speaker, which is myself. So my name is Anna-Marie Gubanski, and apart from the organizer of Revenue Forums, I am founder and CEO of Tacticon Consultancy and our soft brand, Tacticon Hotels. Today I will talk about um, uh, the, my perception of loyalty. Now the other speakers. Michael, you want to start? Yeah, yeah thank you, Anna-Marie. Thanks for having me on this panel. My name is Mike Demenza, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Fans. And I'm going to talk about how we turn customer into fans. Vladimir? Hi, my name is Vladimir. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of um, uh, Upgrade2. Um, and uh, behind me, there are a couple of others uh, uh, that uh, provide us with uh, with the software. Uh, <clears throat> uh, my topic today is going to be the traditional approach um, of loyalty into the future. Great. Um, my name is Chi Chen. I'm the commercial officer as I reckon you. Today I'm going to talk about how to win both the heart and mind of the customer. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Anna. Um, I'm a CRM product specialist at, at SHR, and today we are going to talk about gamification in loyalty programs. Interesting. I'm already now looking forward to it. Uh, as said, we will close up with the discussion forum, uh, and please free, feel free to ask any questions that you might have uh, in the meantime. Uh, it's highly uh, appreciated. So let's then start uh, by the introduction of me. Let's go. My name is Anna-Marie Kubanski and I'm founder of Tacticon, which is a consultancy company specialized in revenue management and distribution. I'm also co-founder of Tacticon Hotels, which is a soft brand for independent hotels. In these five minutes, I thought to talk about my perception of loyalty. Like many of you, I have a wallet filled with loyalty cards, but I am loyal to two companies only. The first one being KLM. As I partly live in Amsterdam and partly in Stockholm, I fly back and forth between these cities. So I have achieved a gold status, which means that we get speedy boarding and an access to the lounge. These two things are extremely important to me, as it only takes a few minutes from entering the terminal to a nice and quiet working space where I can get a cup of coffee and good Wi-Fi. Furthermore, good health and easy. We have a direct line to the help desk who solves any issues and reschedules when we have a change of plans. It does mean that I always must fly K&M in order to maintain this status. And that is exactly what loyalty means, I think. I don't even shop for any of the other airlines. The fact that I have a great number of points is not important to me. I can never use them anyway. For me, the fact that they value me as a customer is much more important. The other company we are loyal to is a five-star hotel in Bangkok, belonging to one of the major city chains in the world. Before pandemic, we were always there on a specific week in December. We had done so for seven years in a row. 
So it's quite surprising that we usually are being greeted with the question if this is our first time in Bangkok. Seeing that I'm the only Anna-Marie Gubanski in the world, this is an interesting question. So why do we return? Well, this is the only week in the year when we hardly do anything and we spend time at one of the pools. The staff there is amazing. They recognize us and seem to be at our site exactly at the same time we start to get hungry or thirsty and sometimes come over to us for some, with some fresh fruits or talk. Now, after dinner, we like to go to the hotel bar and have a glass of wine by the riverside. Staff there knows what we want and immediately come over to us with two glasses of white wine and a mosquito spray. When there's no space close to the river when we enter, they help us moving over to our favorite stop as a spot as soon as it becomes available. Furthermore, housekeeping apparently notices the things we use and like. They usually give me an extra bottle of body lotion and make sure that coffee is well provided for in the room. This means that we really feel acknowledged. That front desk does not welcome us back is not so very important to us, although it would have been nice every now and then. Another loyalty creating, uh, uh, creator is handling complaints. We recently became very disloyal to a certain car rental company. I don't, don't, won't tell you which one, but the name starts with an H and their handling of our complaint really hurt. For a short holiday, we had rented a car close to the city we stayed at. We had a confirmed and paid reservation for a specific time, one o'clock. When we arrived there exactly on time, we were greeted by three employees closing off the office because they would go on a break until 4 p.m. and were not willing to help us get a car right away. Needless to say, we were a bit upset and immediately wrote a complaint. We received an email two weeks later thanking us for our message and that our feedback was very important to them. And as a thank you, we would get a voucher of $50. My reply that I rather would have received my money back was answered a week later and another two weeks later, money was transferred to our bank account. This is a pity as complaints should be seen as customers who potentially can become your most loyal friends. If, you would have, if they would have replied immediately, they wouldn't have gone out of the way to solve the issue, I would never have thought of another car rental company. So any complaint is a possibility to create loyal customers, but that means that you sh it should be a company policy. Every department should know this. For this specific ex example, apparently there is no such policy, meaning they lost me as a customer. Now I'd like to close off with my key takeaways already. Loyalty is all about recognizing your guests. In my example, KLM does this by making sure that they give me extra good service and make sure that I have a nice, quick, easy experience on the airports. The fact that they send me standard emails pre-stay informing me about things to do in Amsterdam every single time I fly is not so important to me. Now, I am the only Anna-Marie Gubanski in the world, but I have different needs depending on the nature of my travel. On my holiday, I don't care that, uh, that much if, if check-in procedures take a few minutes. When I travel for business purposes, I want things to go quick and easy. Now think about this. Do you have the right technology and policies to understand this every time a guest uh, 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 comes out to you? And then recognizing your guests also means that you recognize them when they're not so happy. Take complaints seriously, as this is an excellent way to gain loyal customers. And that was already the end of my five minutes for this webinar. Even though we are in a situation I never thought we would find ourselves in, a war at our doorstep, I want to close off with expressing a positive feeling. From our company perspective, we feel that we come out of this period stronger than before with new customers, new tools, and a brand new soft brand to help us along the way. Thank you for listening, and I hope you find it worth your while. Um, so let's see if we can go to our next speaker, which is Michael Menzel from, from, from Fattens. Michael, are you uh, ready? All set, yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, hello again. My name is Michael Menzel. I'm the CEO and co-founder of FANS. And uh, in the next five minutes, I'm going to show you around how we think we can turn customer into fans. So uh, let's hit it up then. Um, just imagine a world where every transaction is convenient, fun, does matter, 
where guests orders pay and earn, review and repeat in one seamless flow and love it so much that they come back continuously again and again, where businesses save up to 50% of operational costs by automation, increase basket size by 15% and reach out new clients on autopilot with a whooping 80% participation. In other words, turn customers into fans. Think of all in one, think of an all-in-one solution that combines smart ways of accepting digital payments with smart loyalty rules, with uh, no need of downloading an app or creating login. And uh, ordering at the table, in room, review automation, and uh, uh, built-in tipping, guest retention, management, um, and more are part of this feature set. Just think of what this could do to you. Now, the world of hospitality is changing dramatically. COVID-19 speeds up the digitization. We've seen that all around the globe. QR codes are basically learned from everybody from zero to 100 of age. Offline is out, conven convenience is wins. Inflation and uh, rising costs and uh, labor shortages are tech drivers, especially in hospitality. And Apple Pay is the new cash. So what does it mean? It is this traditional way of offline ordering is cost intensive and slow, very slow. And uh, basically no upsell opportunities are taking uh, part in this um, offline ordering where offline payments are just cost intensive, unpleasant for the consumer, they need to wait and are seen only as a pure cost center and uh, all opportunities engaging with the customer are being missed out and loyalty loyalty doesn't even um, exist there. So just think of where all customers are at the shopping experience, whether in e-commerce or on the point of sale, each customer has to pay. So this is the moment of truth, right? And uh, so you combine after the checkout, a rule-based loyalty um, that is frequency, time frame, and amount based and uh, reward them with a simple and powerful cashback uh, solution. And this is FANS. So starting about turning off online ordering and commodity payment, and it is this payment into a marketing play. You have a great digital customer experience at the pass with 100% uh, of customers going through that process. And you will find these process as well as in digital menus, ordering and mobile payments. You save time, reduce staff and save money. What you will get is a 10 times higher participation rate and uh, 100 times opening rate to any of your communication. Where do you find those tools? Where do you find those entry points? Well, one is the e-commerce where you can just use your pay button and everything that is in the checkout process where you can basically offer your loyalty. Again, you will offer your loyalty to 100% of your guests with a participation rate that is 80% and uh, with an increase in guest retention of 40%, 40%. And it is super convenient to the guest, no app download, no login. Another point is QR codes, of course. We've seen that all around in the past uh, few months. So again, no hardware. No operational, uh, no operational costs for the staff to, to put them elsewhere. And again, it is this bring your own device that you have and uh, people pay with their own device. And uh, that is the easiest solution to basically get people into your loyalty. Again, payment is the core of, is the starting point. So what we have here is we have e-commerce and restaurants, hotels and local shops. And so it's doing the plumbing, provide convenience and be faster, cheaper and reliable. So the payment, again, you need to get people into the payment to offer them what you have as a loyalty marketing play. Now, what that, what that could potentially be is like, it is come back often and you will get the reward. It is collecting reviews, especially important for, for restaurants, since they don't have a data point where they can send out post-stay emails to the guests. 
you have a CRM on autopilot since you know uh, when people buy what, you have a loyalty network just align with the, uh, the businesses around you. You can do local AdSense, local AdWords, and of course you can do uh, charity um, actions with anybody that is in your hotel. So I hope I've given you some ideas of how we see the future of loyalty. Thank you for having me and over to you, Anamiri. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Michael. So actually your point is uh, make payment easy and you create loyal guests. Is that maybe the, the, the quick and easy way to, to uh, wrap it up? Yeah, it is like payment is for, forgotten completely in this loyalty customer experience completely. It is you pay and you go. And mm -hmm. we take this very intimate moment actually where you hand over your money that you earned to somebody else as the point where we start uh, with the loyalty marketing place, so to speak. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Okay. So let's go to our next speaker then, uh, Vladimir Martinov from Upgrade 2. I hope you are ready too. I am. <clears throat> I'm the co-founder of Upgrade 2, a product which supports hospitality operations to establish transactional communication with their guests in a relevant and personalized manner. Now today, let's talk now about traditional loyalty into the future. <clears throat> So what is loyalty? <clears throat> Over the years, guest loyalty has been very high up in my sights. It is very important and it is not very surprising that there are many different interpretations of what it is. Let's start uh, from the general and get into context. From the many uh, definitions out there, I've picked up the one from the Cambridge Dictionary, which you see on screen now. Now let's uh, focus um, and talk a little bit about what it is that we need to um, to do uh, in, in the hospitality industry. Um, we need to, let's focus on the gist of this, friendship and support. This is what answers our goals within hospitality, gaining and retaining guests. No matter of whether you are a major hospitality chain affiliate or a small hotel chain or an independent operator, building that uh, coveted guest loyalty starts uh, before your guest steps into your establishment. Let me um, very quickly also add two um, of the forms in which loyalty is delivered, that of incumbents and traditionality. While both are tied around brand loyalty, uh, we can see the incumbent successfully used by the major hotel chains with points, airlines with air miles, coffee shops with free coffees, it is, however, working on loyalty in reverse, having gained your guest, then trying to keep them and increase the spend that they uh, provide us. The traditional approach, however, focuses on quality of service expressed in a presence and the reputation. Hoteliers <clears throat> have been gaining a repeat business through personal relationship with each guest, similar to the incumbency in a way, but it is slightly different in its execution. And now, and gain then new uh, custom by establishing its uh, brand recognition as a reputable business in the local area of operation. Now, why are we talking about these two in particular? And why are we seeing that there's a problem? There are a couple of problems that prevent traditional, uh, <clears throat> that prevent traditional um, uh, delivering of traditional loyalty. We've got uh, the popularity of incumbents and uh, that's how many perceive the topic uh, in this uh, way only. The area of operation has changed with the advance of the internet and uh, its e-commerce power. The market pressures, economic and resource scarcity hinder effective, uh, effective visibility on the market and the delivery of uh, content to all guests. So what is the solution? Let's uh, shift the paradigm namely it is not about a repeat, but every visit. Provide um, our, our guests with offers and customizations before they arrive at the hotel, uh, attributes that are relevant to their stay. Provide, and then once they arrive, provide the service which you owe them fully. Pre-stay is important, if not more so when the actual, than the actual stay. Slightly differentiating from the message that uh, we just heard. And in this sense, Tyler's exchange theory discusses in detail um, why engaging and being 
uh, relevant with your uh, with your guests as a way of making them friends that breeds or, or builds loyalty within the physical world as much as it does on the, in the e-commerce one. Uh, this will yield greater control over the relationship with each guest. Uh, your guests have elected to stay with you, engage with them, gain uh, friends and supporters in that sense, and, <clears throat> and deliver your best service and product. Then encourage them to talk about their good experiences and the modern version or as we call it also amplified word of mouth. So be relevant, engage actively pre-arrival and make sure your sentiment positioning is competitive. Thus be guest profitable, be profitable to them, the guests. And that's, and that's how you're going to build your own profitability. <clears throat> and then with, uh, with, so a great system is such that has all its parts uh, working together and we know that in, in a hotel or in a restaurant when it works well we know it in in, in service and we uh, and we see it smooth, smoothly delivered through the software supporting that service the uh, and ultimately would like to be able to pre-build loyalty before our guest arrives thus extend our friendship and a support and so the question would be is there a solution to that uh, communication here it is it, this, this particular one will, will connect you with your guests in a pre-stay and, and stay periods and will deliver e-commerce power and service that will, that will reach your guests in a relevant and timely fashion. It will provide you with the means to enable personalization by offering attributes, local and destination context and ease of arrival to establish and the foundations of that wonderful stay experience that your hotel delivers. And that was what I wanted to talk to you about the future. Thank you, Vladimir. Over to you. Yeah. <laughs> Happy it's done? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I think that uh, you made a few points that I also meant uh, in, in, my, in, my, uh, in my first, uh, uh, in, my, in my speech. Uh, so let's, let's get back to a few of your points also in the question and answers. But then maybe before that, let's see if our next uh, speaker is, is ready. Chi, are you ready for us? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, just real quick introduction about I reckon you. Uh, I reckon you is based in Amsterdam, customer around the world. We provide middleware solution to help our customer to collect and organize the information and leverage our five application to monetize the data, to drive personalized experience, digital engagement, operation excellence, retention, loyalty, and smart marketing. Let's talk about winning both the heart and mind of the customer today. Heart and mind. Brands have emotional connection with customers tend to have biggest influence on behavior. Emotionally loyal customers are willing to spend more with the brand, even if meaningful alternatives are available. You want to win both short and long games. Focus on customer lifetime value instead of just one transaction at a time. However, most of the loyalty programs in the market are still universally geared toward rational loyalty, as opposed to adding emotional attachment with the customer. Customer will only stay loyal as long as the brand continues to provide the best value. And where there's a better proposition comes along, they will move on. Then what do we do? Customers don't collect pawns to have a hotel room. They're collecting pawns so they can take their loved ones or family to place. Brands need to focus on provide consistent service, personalized experience, create value in the golden moment of redemption. What it means is all go back to the fundamental basic, hospitality and service. A simple recognition of the customer, know their name, know their preferences will go a long way. Such a turn down service, take a look at the customer, which side of the bed he or she sleep on, leave the slipper, water, TV remote, turn down amenity on the same side of the bed. Little detail matters. That's why it's all about the profile. Creating direct relationship and delivering consistent personalized experience, you must have two guest profile or system of record. Not big data, your own data is the most valuable information you possess, not from a third party company. The customer have engaged your brand in some way, know them and own them. 
once you own the system of record, you can determine who your customer are, how to engage them in a meaningful way by analyzing the key profile attributes such as room type, travel periods, frequency, diversity, just like revenue management, yielding average daily rate through manipulate the market segment. You can yield customer loyalty through manipulate the guest segment. Next, customer service. Consistency is the key. Take care of the basic. Make it easy for the customer to book and engage your brand. Chatbot might seem a good idea, but if the chatbot doesn't learn and get smarter over time, you're creating an obstacle for your customer. Pay attention to customer needs. Family traveler might want extra towel. Business traveler might want extra hanging. Be consistent. Arm your team member with information to address the emotional side of customer interaction. Birthday celebration, anniversary, going the extra mile to like your customer. It's all about making your customer life easier during the travel journey, as simple as setting up the baby cribs before they arrive. Once you understand your customer, deliver consistent service, create memorable moments, you can now reward them based on their travel behavior. For example, couple, complimentary room upgrade, family, free breakfast, business, seamless check-in through kiosks, and free Uber credit. Each guest segment create different value to your brand. Mix them up to optimize your retention index. Now, there's always a question, how to make it happen? We have legacy system, information sit in multiple places, separate database for marketing and operation, data silo, department silo. Stop focusing on what you cannot do. Focusing on what you can do. Leverage technology, middleware. Middlewares enable you to stitch all kinds of data together, structure and unstructure, real time with open API. Data becomes digestible, measurable. You can actually leverage the information to drive consistent customer service, remove obstacles, create direct relationships, reward your customer what matters to them. It's also enabled to drive future innovation. You cannot force loyalty from customers, you have to become loyal to them. If your brands want to encourage customer loyalty, improve customer willingness to pay, you have to win both the heart and mind of the customer. It's okay to pause and take a moment to think and reflect. Ask yourself, does your loyalty program really make an impact to the business? Connect with customers. Just like you should ask yourself on the room type strategy, if it is so critical, why do you still have the same image for every room type you sell on your brand.com? Customer want to be known. Is always start with your own data. Make the connection. Then you can leverage different applications to deliver, optimize, enhance, and measure. Thank you. Thank you for that, Chi. Um, in regards to your last comments, actually, when we when we make like our offers to our to our guests, we try to personalize them as well and use the pictures on their websites. But usually, I, I just have to go to one of the OTAs to get the best pictures, and I I, I always find that amazing. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you. I, I think I'll I'll just like come back to you also with your points, but let's do that on the uh, during the the discussion forum. But then, uh, yeah, you you do say that you. Um, um, you, you must know actually your guests and you must reach out to them. But then this guest information might be a bit of an, of, 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 of an issue. But let, let's get back to, the, to, to you in that one. Before that, maybe let's go to, to Anna. Anna, darling, are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Hello, everybody. So um, I represent SHR and uh, also would briefly explain what we're doing. So we uh, provide um, platforms for our uh, hotelier, which uh, assist them to optimize uh, processes for their central reservation, for their revenue platforms, and for the CRM. So I am a um, CRM product specialist at SHR, but my experience is, uh, I think for four years, I've been working with different platforms. And uh, I am uh, for, probably my lifetime, a loyal customer of uh, many brands across the world, well, basically in Europe. So I think I know it from inside and outside. Um, we can start. So what is loyalty? What is the future of loyalty? I think that putting in the summary all the presentations which have been done previously, we can say that it is recognition. So when I start a new project with my clients, I always ask them, how would you like to recognize your guests? What would be unique tool? 
Would you like to keep using points? Would you like to introduce different tier structures? Or would you like to make personalized and different rewards, which would be very unique? So we always need to find out this unique uh, option. So how many of you know this screen and play this game? I have to confess, I played it for over two years. I was really engaged because this game was updating every single time I would achieve a new level, a new tier if we speak hotel uh, language. So this game is very simple to understand, very simple to understand the competition. So you're very much engaged and it's constantly getting updated. So you always receive this different type of candies. You know how to use them. They give you new uh, I don't know, benefits. You get daily rewards. You get rewards for playing seven days in a row. So you constantly being very much engaged with the whole dynamic of the game. So if we have this concept on the games, we have to notice that uh, this is actually everywhere in our life nowadays. So uh, let's imagine that we have a loyalty platform, CRM, which is able to create as many tiers as you want and assign custom rewards per tier. So when the tier is a chip, means tier level, right? So if we are so used to it, for example, Strava is using this for the sports challenges, Apple Fitness, I challenge my friends every day. I sometimes go in the evening to walk extra hour because I need to beat them in the end of the month. Right, so how can we introduce hotel loyalty and gamification to keep guests entertained because this is our goal. We need to retain them, we need to keep them engaged, we need to make them return and like us to be our marketers. Right, so since we have the example of the games, what can we do in order to move it all together? <clears throat> and this is my first Machu Picchu, so that's why we have five seconds now. Um, so. Since we have different options, we need to also understand how could we define gamification? So it is definitely a modern approach. So this is something what we are not used in the terms of the hotel uh, language yet. It's simple game mechanisms. This is the core. It is benefits for both hotels and for the guests. It usually gives valuable rewards and it's also challenging, but not frustrating. Overall, it will create a unique experience for the guest and for the hotel. So you can define it for both uh, sides. What can be achieved with introducing gamification to hotel loads of programs? Emotions. This is our goal. We need to create positive emotions. We can optimize, personalize, and automate rewards. Again, our goal is to do this. We offer competition fulfillment, which is tied to the uh, emotions as well. We want to increase guest spend and also increase frequency. So we want to get recency, frequency, and monetary. We also can achieve that this source game would be the unique channel for the engagement. It will elevate the onboarding. It will reduce uh, churn. So guests will stop living. They will keep being entertained, at least reading our marketing emails. Uh, we can provide exclusive offers. And also it is a very easy platform for us to um, launch new products, new openings, new restaurant open, specific branch offers. So rewards equals candies in our Candy Crush world. So if this is a hotel chain, which is using point structure, why don't we use in-app currency, a currency which is inside the game as a trial. We don't need to move completely. We can have a demo. We can give badges, which is rewards. We can have competitions. And we can also define what are the personal best. So we can, within the game, see who are our most engaged players, gamers, uh, guests, members. So we also increase the vocabulary. So it's a multi-step game drive digital engagement, which will help build deeper relationship with customers. So since we are so used to have this pattern in everywhere in our life, why don't we introduce it to the hotel, especially if it's a chain business? This is something that we can implement and probably provide a more unique, unforgettable service and brand to the guests. Um, so thank you so much. This was uh, loyalty and the gamification.
Thank you. I, I haven't started with Candy, candy Crush, uh, but my husband is. Don't. No, no, no. But we have a different game, which is like you need to just like have uh, move uh, fluids in the same color in, into uh, these, these tubes. And there we also just like compete each other. But then my husband wins. He's terrible. Yeah, thank you, thank you uh, for for your points. Now let's let's see if we can if we can have like a bit of a panel discussion. And I think actually, I mean, I would like to have a, a quick answer to to also a short question. Do you think that the time of collecting points as a loyalty program? Do you think that this this, this will remain, or is it going to be changed as for, for, forever? And this is not by all means like a, a leading question. I, I'd really like to know your opinion about the, the, the collecting points parts because it does have a purpose. Maybe you can start with Anna. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I do think that it will remain for a long time with the chains which are successfully using it for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it would be very hard for already loyalty members if chain decides to move from it it should be very smooth. However, um, if let's say there is a new loyalty program which is introduced to a brand which never had it before, they don't own any loyalty database, uh, I think points is something what we probably should avoid, but keep the tiers. Yeah, you're quite right. It's difficult to get rid of a point system if you already have implemented it. That's right, yeah. Chi, do you have, a, 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 do you have an opinion about it? Um Absolutely. I, I think the point system is a, is a dinosaur. Um, but unfortunately, it, it, it has been embedded into the business for so long, which mm -hmm. means it takes a, takes a humongous amount of energy uh, to try to change it. But it doesn't mean the brands cannot evolve. They can really start making some changes and how to basically give more reason to the customer why they should participate in the brand. That's why you start seeing all the major brand is start uh, reaching out to different companies like Uber, Lyft, all the different companies so that they can start earning different currency. It's not just airline, which means you got to continue to expand and evolve because the point program for me is dead. Yeah, I agree. And maybe maybe also uh, if I take away your, your, your point in Vladimir, right now they're starting with, with um, you can use your points in other ways, but then, I mean, I have a lot of points, but I still cannot buy the things that I want uh, or an upgrade or so on. I mean, it, it, it takes forever to, to, to get to that level, right? Vladimir, do you have, do you have an opinion about it? Um, yeah, <clears throat> in, in my opinion, point system or uh, tiers, in, in essence, if you look at uh, the two in, in the incumbency, perspective, they're more or less exactly uh, reaching out to the same sort of um, uh, the, the same sort of principle. I think uh, points, collecting points, or even uh, in, in the UK, if uh, for those of you who have been in the UK, there is a system called the, uh, what was it now? Um, mm, there is a loyalty membership uh, type of a card that allows you to collect points um from major supermarkets and allows you then uh, and from different uh, areas including ebay and then allows you to spend those uh, those collected points um on products or food even that that is interesting for you um which of course uh, gives you the opportunity to uh, collect those points and go to these places that um then that do it but if we were to get into the hospitality industry I think it has its place. Not everybody can use it. And, and this is one of the major issues that we've got in the hospitality industry. We've got, um, we've got the major chains that, that are having that, uh, those uh, point systems. We've got the airlines. Uh, but then what do we do with the small chains and the hotels who, uh, and the independents who do not have the presence, right? And so that's where we need to start thinking about loyalty in a slightly different way. And then by numbers, Independence and small chains um, are significantly larger proportionately to to the larger chain hotels. So, um, so I think there is space for for uh, points or a derivation of that. Uh, but then there is also um, there there is also that traditional way of approach that we need to start talking about and help the industry in. 
Yeah, I think uh, come to think of this, I mean, next week I'm going to have with a meeting with uh, with a travel agency that actually is there only solely for helping people to uh, to um, use their points um, uh, on 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 the very different loyalty programs. I'm, I'm quite interested to see what that brings because I think actually maybe getting rid of points is also just like a form of creativity in finding ways to easily um, make use of them, and then maybe a point system can be can be uh, can be interesting again. Michael, do you have do you have um, uh, an opinion about this? Um, very strong, yes, because that is the reason why we founded FANS, because we were really fed up with all the point system that we um, collected and need to have on our iPhone or, or mobile phone, because we didn't know how the points translate into what. Is it a glass of wine or is it a two-week um, holiday or what, what, what? Basically, points are equivalent to a currency, right, to euros, US dollars. So what, what, what? It, it, there's not just no transparency. So this compu computation ease that people do not understand what they actually get. And you just, in a way, said it also. It's like, well, what is it? Um, so for us, we founded fans because we want to have this computation ease. People need to understand what they will get. And money is always a good translation. Pe no, people know what five euros are. Right, they do not know what 5,000 points and miles more are, but they would know what five euros are. So I think long term, mid term, it will be given up, especially with the Gen Z rising, and they are super interested in money and not collecting points, right? So it's rather for the for the boomers, these point collections. And we talk with uh, with hotel groups that will give up their point system loyalty. Um, with a conversion, of course, because they know how much how much money it is, 5,000 points in their system translate into what, what kind of uh, money value they, they basically see behind it, right? So I think it will be given up. It's, yeah, it's, it's a dinosaur, like she said. And um, so, yeah, that's my, my view on how it is. Yeah, I, I understand the feeling. Myself, I have about 21,562 points at KLM, but I still can't buy anything for it. So yeah, uh, if I would have known money, uh, I, I, I would definitely have meant, a lot, uh, meant something. Chi, there's a question for you in the chat box, but I have another question for you at the, at the, at the, to, to start with. Now you say your own data is the most important data, right? And I, 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 uh, I'm there with you, but own data. Uh, this is something that we that we have discussed quite a number of times. How do we get our own data when when a broad part of actually uh, guests come from from third party channels that don't really provide us with the data that we might want to have about the guest? Or did I misunderstand you? I think that's two types of data, right? First is the data you possess, either from the property management system, CRS, POS. Um, even your text messaging system, right? Because if you really tr truly want to drive personalized experience, you need to have unstructured data, which means you can bring all those data in, right? And an API is available, very easy, can connect it. And then also the middleware has the capability also cleans all the data, stitch it everything to one golden po profile. And then from there, then you can start really monitoring what other information is missing. Going back to your question, you do have, you know, every hotel company do have some third party business coming in, either from the traditional GDS or OTA, right? And most of those partners don't share any information besides first name, last name, which means then you can put a put an action together with operation team to try to capture the information, either through the kiosk, contactless check-in, pre-arrival check-in, or when someone checking at the front desk, how to make sure, get that information, explain to the customer what's the benefit so they can the folio, and get you know additional information in the future about the brands and all this, but you got to give a reason, right? It has to be convenient. Yeah, yeah um, uh, get your point. So actually, the pre-arrival uh, actions that you take, the strategic uh, actions, are uh, your way of go, uh, getting uh, getting into uh, guest information. Yes, and yeah. also during the during the stay, right? Um, when someone come down to have a cup of cappuccino, you can capture those information. I'll tell you a story. I still remember right now until this moment, I always share with anybody is, I stayed at a hotel in Seychelles and my toothpaste was almost done, right? 
And then that same night when I got back to my room, I got a new toothpaste. I did not ask for it. The housekeeper paid attention. They put that toothpaste right there for me. That for me is basically paying the little attention and you drive that intimacy and then not invasive, right? The customer will remember and then they will loyal to your brand. That's the emotional connection. And then you do the other thing consistently, then you can win them. Instead of just like you said, you got 20 something thousand points from KRM. You still cannot find something, mm. buy anything. I tell you, I have 50,000 points. I still cannot get anything. <laughs> ah, okay. You know, I'm very competitive. You have more points than me. That's terrible. Yeah, but I think, and that actually also was a little bit my point on, on, on the hotel, which we stay in a week at. I, I like it when, when, she, when, when housekeeping sees what it is I use. So they take away these, these decaf sachets and they, they put some extra coffee into, into it because they see that we actually drink a cup of coffee during, in, in, in the morning. And it's these little touches actually uh, that I think as, uh, always is like quite soon forgotten because while housekeeping, they are maybe, so, maybe, maybe on a different level, but they are so vital into getting loyal customers. Vladimir, you, you, I think you made the point, right? When, when, when I was talking about um, uh, point collecting, uh, independent hotels, but what, what are the issues you find for independent hotels? And is there any way that they can get a good loyalty program? So um, the point, uh, and then that's where the traditional approach um, gets uh, targeted towards um, that part of the market. That's where it came from. And the, everything else afterwards was an invention of the newer times. Um, when you when you look at loyalty, what is loyalty really? It is gaining friends and people who are supporting you. Loyalty, whilst you are challenged in, in comparison to the larger chains, the better presence chains where you would be able to redeem or collect those points or, or kind of hook up your guests to be able to use them somewhere else and create that long-term loyalty. Uh, I think the independents have their place within the loyalty world with bringing making that experience exceptional for that one guest every time and that then uh, reflects on to how these hotels present themselves on the market and thus gain more guests um, i i included um, uh, a term that we we tend to use uh, within sentiment management in one of the other um, products uh, which is called uh, competitive positioning so uh, you are looking at your uh, sentiment positioning on the market in the same way competitively as you would with your rate, right? So in revenue management, we know we are positioning ourselves on rates and quality, but the measurement of quality now in the social networks is as important as your rate. In fact, they're related. And so um, for independence, gaining that loyalty of that guest, making that experience count, every experience counting, is how they will uh, how how they would use it going uh, going into the into the market. So that's that that is my my thought about it for independence in particularly. Yeah, and I also think that independence hotels have have a have an advantage there because I mean it's 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 easier getting getting them these kinds of policies into into uh, the hotels of course i mean giving a certain level of service is always good so everybody is good at that but just like doing something extra or something being that, unique uh, is yeah. i think i think is the 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 the, the words there I, thank you thank you yeah. Yeah. um i think anna uh, there's also something else that i I was thinking about and yeah, you, you being uh, working for a company that provides a large range of, 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 of systems. Buying technology, that's something. I mean, you can buy your fantastic CRN system, uh, but then I also sometimes feel like, okay, you invest in some something, but then it, 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 it feels like hotels are not really, uh, they don't really have the time to use these kinds of of, 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 of systems. Is there any thoughts that you, you have into how can you make it easy for, uh, for, for hoteliers to use systems? Um, well, <laughs> we can train them, but uh, of course the, the, the first step would be first defining what are their expectations? What are the expectations? What would they like to achieve? And uh, with uh, CRM, we are dividing it into <clears throat> two parts. If it's a loyalty, what should be your loyalty? How would you like your guests to see it? What would you like to give them? How loyal would you like to be to your loyalty guests? So 
a lot of questions, uh, a lot of understanding. Uh, loyalty stands very tight to revenue, so it's always the longest conversation. And the other part of the CRM is marketing. So for the marketing, we are looking for having something automated. The same, how would you segment your database? What are your core markets? Uh, are you focusing only on loyalty members? Okay, good, makes sense, absolutely. So we tried to build everything, um, like we dedicate a lot of time um, in implementations. Um, but um, I would never say that, um, okay, we did it for hotel A, and then for the hotel B, we did it the same exact scenario. So this is the also fun working with the CRM is that there is not even a single project which will be identical. Maybe some hotels would prefer to use points. Okay, we set it up. But then uh, the logic, the earning rules would be different for everybody. The rewards they would like to give, they would be always different. Segmentation, different. Names of the tiers can be different. So, um, and I think it also gives you a part of the creativity. Um, I would never say that it's easy because it's it's always hard to decide what are your goals but uh, once the definition is done then um, I think um, yeah we, we would be there building it yeah and I think actually uh, that, that's also mm -hmm. a very valid point I mean they, they, they buy these kinds of technology for a reason and I think it's also like if you buy technology, it should be for a reason, exactly what you say. It's so like, what, what do you want to achieve and how are you going to use this system already pre-buying? Sometimes, I mean, you can you can find like a lot of different systems at hotels. Um, and, and and I always find it, I mean, it's, 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 it's good to have the thoughts before you buy it. But um, Mike, Mike oh, sorry, did I, did you want to make a? No, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, no, you, you can interrupt me anytime. Now, Michael, when we started talking about uh, loyalty, um, you said, well, okay, uh, I, I prefer it to be done by with, with cash back. So why is cash back preferred for you? Can you explain? Um, yeah, well, cash back is, I think everybody knows that they will get cash back. So there's something they can overview and, and see the value. Um, it is. Just by, by research, it is the most known and, and best perceived loyalty redemption program. I think it's part of the psychology of humankind that they see a reward coming back where actually the hotel is giving back something. Um, net, it might be equal uh, to a discount, but uh, somehow the human brain does not see that the same way. Um, it is like, as I said, it is the hotelier giving back something, so they contribute in a certain way to the success of the of the guest, and uh, that is a completely different uh, perspective. So, and this is what it makes attractive. Where, where you, all point-based systems, they have one big, big mistake, and that is they do not end, right? They are infinite. You can collect points until you're hundred. Right, you don't have to redeem them, and that is one core, core well, mistake I, I see. Well, you can, of course, I'm not answering your question right now. On the cashback side, you can also um, and collect cashback for an infinite time. But the the most cashback systems are they are time based, and this is why they are so successful. And uh, people want to have simple things, especially now COVID nineteen. Simplicity is core. They don't want to overcome complex things. They want to know what they get. And, and money is very simple. It's, a, it's a, the best value they know. They know what five euros are, as I said before. If you trade it into a Uber drive or a glass of wine or what, 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 this is something uh, they wouldn't really perceive the value beforehand, but five euros, five dollars, five pounds, uh, whatsoever, they know what it is. So this, this, again, it is this computational ease. They know what they get. Yeah, is it also the, the, the part that it's uh, instant gratification that, that uh, or you, you get something out of it immediately without collecting, I understand. It, your brain doesn't have to work, right? It is just <laughs> like 
um, okay, I know what five euros are, right? So I buy another room night, I buy another cappuccino at the bar and I get an additional two euros or what, 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 and I know what it is, right? So the brain is lazy, right? This is what it is. And, uh, but yet it wants to be rewarded. That's just like how we work. And uh, so cash back, you don't have to translate it. It's like, well, okay, I know five euros of uh, five euros, whereas 25,000 points on KLM, uh, I would know how it, what it is. It's just like immense, it's like 25,000, wow. It's, it's a large number, but mm. very obviously it doesn't translate into flight. No, so it, it, yeah, I would like to have like, 25,000 euros. Yeah, they make you collect, 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 <laughs> and, and, yeah. but this might lead also into frustration because you do not come to a point where you redeem the points, right? You're just not able to, like, uh, I was not able to redeem my Lufthansa my more points into a uh, business uh, class chip then. And I was, I had like 100,000, but uh, just it could not translate to also the class, the, the, the class I booked in economy to business and I couldn't take these points. So that is frustrating. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So again, okay. simplicity, easy. I need to understand it. I'm a simple guy. I love your product, but don't, over complex things with your rules or whatever it is. Yeah, I completely agree, completely agree. Now I've uh, I tried to get people to to uh, ask something on the chat. We got a question and I ignored it until now. Chi, you got a question. So how do you walk customers through connecting all of the different systems involving in the architectural tech map for hotels into one system of records? Uh, so are there pre-built connectors from uh, the most popular systems? I think this, 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 this is a bit of a more detailed question that, uh, 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 regarding the one that I had previously. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, majority system connection, like what most of the popular system is already pre-built. The connectivity is already there, right? And any other outlier is not that difficult. As long as there's an API, right? There's other way to do it too. If the, the partner doesn't have API, we can always use uh, the old fashioned way, uh, do the diff different file transfers and all this. But we, you know, with the nowadays technology, everything is API because you want to have real time, right? Uh, any, any engagement, for example, you're sending email marketing to your customer. You should not need to wait until the campaign is done to look at, to see the result. You should be able to see it real time, which in all of this is all available. Uh, majority is already pre-built. Yeah, thank you. I see that almost we are uh, at, at, at the end of the webinar already. If we sum it up and please just like, like help me in summing it up. But I think uh, we, we have just like um, a bit of a, a common ground into saying, well, okay, collecting points might be not, 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 not be the most sexy thing, but it's probably going to, it's go, going to stay because of various reasons. But the most important thing is that you deliver a high, a high level service, try, be different, but also recognize your guests. I think we all had that into us. Anything that you want to add before we close it off? No, I think the, the product must be good, right? You can't st uh, start with a loyalty program if your product is just not up to the standard. Okay. And yeah, I would I would add um, that hoteliers should not miss out on an opportunity to make friends with their guests. I think. This is one of the things that hoteliers miss out the most nowadays. If there is one thing that attention is going to be paid to, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally and, agree. And then just one final comment. You cannot look at loyalty by itself. You got to look at everything all together. And that's how you basically can set up the future. Yeah. Uh, uh, totally agree on that. So it should be like a, a, a company policy. Okay, well, that is already then the end of the of the webinar. I uh, hope you had an enjoyable hour. Uh, Lisa, I learned a lot, so thank you very much. Um, our next webinar is about um, uh, race parity. It's a never ending story. And it's on the 19th of May. Uh, we have speakers from Tacticon, guess who that is? The Edge, the Hotels Network, and we have a special guest coming from Accor. Uh, and we're signing up our final two uh, expert panelists at, as we speak. So I hope you'll all be able to enjoy uh, to, to join us also on the 19th of May. 
Uh, this session is recorded uh, and I will publish it as soon as possible on our YouTube ch channel and I'll just send you the link uh, afterwards as soon as it's ready so you can watch this time and time and again. And I hope you found it a uh, good enough reason to do spend some time and look at it again. Well, that's it for now, uh, for, for, for today. Thank you all. Uh, well, thank you. Special thanks to my wonderful love uh, uh, panelists of today. I really enjoyed it. And uh, thank you so much for making this webinar to, into a high quality. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Ah, you too. Bye -bye. You too. Wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs>